My next guest says with U.S. banking deposits under pressure, she's keeping her eye on next week's results from regional and community banks. Let's bring in Moody's Anna Arsav uh, to talk about this group. Anna, it's great to have you. Um, have, have you gotten any clues from the reports we've gotten so far about the sensitivity of, of large banks at this point to higher yields, pressure on deposit costs, or any other big picture themes uh, that you think are worth watching? Thank you for having me. Um, well, first, uh, first and foremost, the, it, what we learned today is uh, that the large banks remain strong from a capital liquidity perspective. Um, there is a you know mixed story depending on which banks we're going to talk about. J.P. Morgan certainly being the leader, it outperformed um, and is the only one from the three that reported today actually that's trading up uh, consequently today. And, and there's a reason for it. I mean, J.P. Morgan closed, to, you know, it's in basically bought a bank that um, was uh, in distress and um, and is benefiting already uh, from that. Uh, it's um, it's uh, deposits actually were up. Only uh, bank that had deposits up um, relative to the other large peers that reported today. And even that uh, without the First Republic um, acquisition. So JP Morgan outperformed across all businesses. When we take now to Wells, um, you know, a little, you know, definitely doing well, but regulatory costs still remain uh, elevated. And there is a commercial real estate story that's developing and keep developing for Wells with greater exposure than particularly in office and particularly in California relative to the other large banks. And then Citi, uh, happy to talk more about it, but uh, underperformed relative to particularly these two banks, um, high regulatory cost, different business mix, does not have the strong U.S. retail business as well as J.P. Morgan. So, so definitely disappointed probably investors. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, and the market has been uh, essentially telling a similar story there, of course, if you look at the way that the city is valued versus J.P. Morgan and the others. Uh, it seems like a familiar theme. I, I do wonder, though, if things like uh, slightly higher credit reserves uh, and things like that. Is there anything that you would, um, I yeah. guess, be alarmed about, or is this just kind of where we are in the cycle? Well, well a couple of things we're watching. Uh, number one, just to retrade the commercial real estate exposures. Uh, mm -hmm. To give you a sense, we've been writing a lot about this topic. The Half of the $6 trillion exposure in the U.S. is on uh, U.S. banks' balance sheets. And roughly, you know, a quarter, um, basically, of all the loans on U.S. banks are commercial real estate loans. So, we, of course, we have to be concerned about where this asset class is trending, particularly from an office perspective. But we have to kind of think about what does it mean, you know, small banks versus large banks. Um, the bulk of this exposure and where is the concentration is actually the banks that are sub $250 billion. We wrote research that for banks that are sub $250 a billion in size, uh, commercial real estate is greater than two times of their capital versus mm -hmm. for the large banks, um, greater than who are bigger than 250 billion. That is only 50 percent. So yes, commercial real estate is a story, definitely for the banking sector, but not necessarily for these banks. Maybe more so for for Wells Fargo, and Wells Fargo did provide uh, significantly more disclosure this time around, particularly relative to regional um, um, exposures, et cetera, and, and increased its provision again. So the CRE is starting to um, show cracks, particularly in office. And, and this is going to be much more of a theme for the smaller banks that are starting to report next week.